so if there's anybody in the chat that believes we are still under the Mosaic law and that we are still supposed to keep that Mosaic law, um, you know, just just let it be known in the chat. Yes, you did. I read about the North and uh, South tribes, but it's clear. That's right, Sister Nikki. No, but I'm confused about tithes. Well, Mika, I'm going to do a study on tithes. Just be a bit patient with that. Um, just be a bit patient. But I will tell you this. I don't believe that the church are held under that system of tithing. Okay, I'll go a bit in detail when I do the teaching on it. But the church, they're not held under that system of tithing. The church is under a system of giving. And there's a clear difference between tithing and giving. All right. The Bible talks about we need to be we give freely. Right. So I'll get into that, though, but I don't that that'll take us that'll take us somewhere. All right. Praise the Lord. All right. So seeing that nobody in the chat uh, believes that we are under the Mosaic law. That's right, butterfly. Give as you are led. Do not pass no collection plate to me. Do not pass no collection plate to me. Talking about if I give, God is going to do this and God is going to do that. You know, get out of here with that. I'm trying to bribe you into giving. Trying to bribe you into giving. And then try to use scripture. Then try to use scripture to support that foolishness. Then threaten you. Oh, if you don't give. Oh. If I don't give, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I got five credit cards. What you mean if I don't give? If I don't give, God is going to do what? Whoo! I got a Visa. I got a MasterCard. I got an Express. Where do I swipe? Get the heck out of here. Get the heck out of here. Nobody trying to hear that foolishness. All right. Enough, enough, enough of that. Praise the Lord. Are we under the Mosaic law? Do we To still, I don't like to put still. Keep it. It's all right, serving of the king. Love you, sis. Are we under the Mosaic law? Do we have to keep it? Right? And I'm going to tell you why this is a a very complicated question if you don't understand the word of God. The reason why this is a very complicated question if you don't understand the word of God is because you will get caught up on this Mosaic law. So what I like to get everybody to understand is before there was a quote unquote Mosaic law, God 
had a moral law. Now, mind you, this moral law was not on stone. This moral law was who God is. God is just moral. God is good. God is just. God is righteous. God is holy. Everything that morality makes up, that's who God is. Right? So we're not going to sit here and say that morality didn't start until Moses. Until Moses? No. Because guess what? Cain knew that it was wrong to murder Abel. He didn't need a Mosaic law to tell him that it was wrong to murder Abel. He didn't need a Mosaic law to tell him that. So with that understanding, we have to now ask ourselves, why was the Mosaic law given? The Bible says it was added for transgression. Whose transgression? Israel. Well, what happened to their moral compass? Because Cain knew that it was wrong not to murder. What happened to Israel's moral compass? Oh, it's starting to make sense now. I'll tell you what happened to Israel's moral compass. Egypt. Egypt. What do you mean, Egypt? Let me explain. You see, there was a man. There was a man. Let me erase this so that we can get into this. All right. And matter of fact, let me go a little bit back so that y'all can understand genealogy. All right. I need y'all to understand genealogy. Okay. And I just want I just want to bring y'all through the genealogy so that we can have a clear picture All right so that we can have a clear picture So when God got fed up Amen. And brought the flood on the world. We see that we had Noah. Right. I'm going back, y'all. Before we get into the law and that conversation, we have to have an understanding of genealogy. Because this actually helps us. In our understanding as to why the land of Canaan was chosen. Right? We need to know why. You think God just chose the land of Canaan as the promised land out of nowhere? You think that was just happenstance? You think he just said, you know what? Eh, I, I want to give you Canaan. No, there was a reason why this particular land was chosen. There's a reason why. Right? There's a reason why. And we're going to get into that. So we got to understand that Noah had three sons. It's all strategic. It's all strategic. Amen. And God is a God of plan. Okay. God is a God of plan. Now, when we understand that, then we will read genealogies from a different perspective. All right. 
When we understand genealogies, um, then we'll understand uh, 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 God's full purpose. All right. Even when we go back to Eve. Even when we go back to Eve, and I'm going to actually show us that um, we're going to actually go there. We're going to actually go there because I want to show you all something that God said to Eve. I want to show you all something that um, that God said to Eve. Let's go real quick to Genesis because God says something. Um, God says something to uh, to Eve that was very, very, very important. Very important. And I think we need to pay attention to what God said to Eve. All right. Or what God had said to the serpent. In, in, in Genesis chapter 3. Look at what God said. This is very important. And the Lord God said. Unto the serpent. Because thou hast done this. Thou art cursed above all cattle. And above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall thou go, and dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, which is a fatal blow, and thou shall bruise his heel, which is a minor cut. This was God speaking about our coming Savior and how he would in turn defeat the enemy. This was God already establishing that Christ would, in fact, serve the fatal blow to defeat the enemy. All right. We have to understand that. Now, we also understand that when we go through. When we go through. um Genealogy. Right. When we go through genealogy. We got to understand um, there was a, a, a son that Eve had other than um, Cain and Abel. Does anybody know the son that Eve had other than Cain and Abel? There we go. Ooh, we. Yes. Come on now. So let's 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 do this. Cuz we got to understand genealogies, y'all. So Eve gave birth to Seth, right? All right. Who did Seth give birth to? You can find this in Genesis chapter 5. In Genesis chapter 5. Let's read. Let's just go through genealogies, y'all. It's nothing wrong with understanding the Bible. Because I know, listen, when I first started reading the Bible, I skipped all this. I, I'm not afraid to admit it. When I first started reading the Bible... I was not reading this. I'm not sitting here talking about such and such, but got such and such, such and such, but got I'm skipping this. I'm going to the New Testament. I'm reading. I'm reading the New Testament. I didn't understand the significance of this. I 
didn't understand just how important these genealogies was and how much it contributes to my overall understanding of God's salvational plan. I didn't get it. I didn't get it. You know, not everybody is like that servant of the king. Not everybody is like that. I came from gang banging. I came from drug dealing. I came from living a life of instant gratification. I came from a life of I want it now. I don't got time to read all of these names. I ain't got time for all of that. And I can't even pronounce them. I can't even pronounce. Samuel Asaya. What does that say? So, so I skipped it. I skipped it. Exactly. This is boring. I'm not reading this. We have to be real. And that's just where I was in my maturity. I, I, didn't, I didn't find no significance in it. But now that I'm reading and I'm understanding Seth, I'm understanding that Seth lived 105 years and begot Enos. You see that? Hey, y'all, I need y'all to um give me one second. My wife just sent me a text. All right. Give me a quick second, y'all. My wife just sent me a text. All right. I got to respond. If y'all choose to leave, it's OK. I love y'all. But just give me no more than a minute. All right. All right. Praise God. We back, y'all. Um, there was a question in the chat. What does begat mean? Begat means gave birth to. Begat means gave birth to. Right? Not saying that Seth gave birth, but it's just talking about how, um, how Enos was the son of Seth. How Enos... Because the Bible doesn't necessarily mention a lot of women when it comes to genealogies. So it's going to say begat. But it just means born of. All right. Enos was born of Seth. All right. So let's go through the genealogy. And Seth lived after he begat Enos. 807 years. And he begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were 912 years. And he died. And Enos lived 90 years and begat Cain. Man. Soon as I get on live now, all see people don't never want to message me. They don't want to text me. They don't want to call me all day. But the moment I go on live now, all of a sudden people want to call. People want to email. People want to text. Lord have mercy. All right. So we got Enos and then Enos, he gave birth to Canaan. But when we go down, Canaan gave birth to who? Mahalalel, right? Mahalalel. He gave birth to Jared, right? Jared gave birth to Enoch. Enoch, hallelujah. He gave birth to Methuselah. Amen. Methuselah. He gave birth to Lamech. Lamesh, he gave birth to who? Noah. Lord, have mercy. We have to be able to follow the lineage.
We have to be able to follow the lineage. Now we have Noah. Hold on, I gotta switch out markers, y'all. This black, this black is. Shout out to my sister Celeste. I don't care what nobody say. Shout out to my sister Celeste. My sister Celeste saw how I was struggling with my uh with my with my dry eraser board markers. And you know what my sister Celeste did? My sister Celeste ordered me a huge box of dry eraser board markers with erasers. This is how you can tell the love of Christ. I didn't ask her for anything. She just saw that I was in need. And all of a sudden, I got an Amazon delivery. And I got all the markers that I could ask for, y'all. This is how God supplies our need. You can have your mind on one marker. And God is saying that's all you can ask, think, or imagine. You got your mind on one marker. Well, I'm going to send you an abundance of markers where you'll never run out. Lord, have mercy. If that's not a word, I don't know what is. If that's not a word, I don't know what is. <laughs> a bigger dry eraser board. Oh, it's coming, y'all. Don't worry. The, the Lord, the Lord is going to provide. Trust me. Trust me. And shout out to our sister, uh, Miss Cheryl. Sister Miss Cheryl is so excited, y'all, because she was blessed with a Bible dictionary yesterday. Amen. She was blessed with a Bible dictionary. Praise the Lord. And I just want to thank God for being able to put us in positions to help brothers and sisters in need. Because brothers and sisters was there for me. Brothers and sisters was there for me when I was in need. So it's only right that we continue to pay it forward. It's only right that we continue to pay it forward so that we can be a blessing. Amen. I'm live all the time. And, and you know what? It's hard for me to even give a schedule because I go when the spirit tells me to go. It's hard for me to maintain a schedule, a consistent schedule, because I go whenever the spirit leads me to go. At whatever time. But if you are looking for videos that I upload, if you miss any lives, they will be uploaded to YouTube. Because listen, y'all. Sorry, I can't search for videos on Apple Watch. Because listen, y'all, I need to say this. Because this is an announcement that I have to make. Very important. TikTok isn't allowing me to download these lives. TikTok is not allowing me to download these lives. I've been trying to download the last few lives that we've been doing and I can't download them. It's only allowing me to make clips. So I'm sorry, but I'm going to have to start doing these lives on YouTube. I'm going to have to start doing these lives on YouTube. Because once I finish the live on YouTube, it will automatically upload to my page. It will automatically upload to my channel. All right. I'm not doing all of that. Uh, not, <laughs> I'm not getting a second device. I tried to do that last time. I was on I was on YouTube from my laptop and I was on TikTok from my cell phone. I don't like that because now I got my eyes are in different directions on one live. I'm not even looking at the people. It, it, it's just not. It's, it doesn't look good. It doesn't look good. So, again, if you are truly a supporter of the ministry and the teaching, 
then it should not be a problem to transition to YouTube. All right. There shouldn't it shouldn't even be a, a, a it should be a no brainer. OK, you're on YouTube. I see you there. It should be really that simple. It should really be that simple. OK, you're on YouTube. How do I subscribe? I'll be there. And I don't I don't have to post when I'm live on YouTube. When you subscribe, there's a notification bell that you hit. When you subscribe, you hit that notification bell and you're going to get notified whenever I go live. The subscription link is right on my page. There's a YouTube link right on my TikTok page. And God is already moving. We're already over 100 subscribers. We're already over 100 subscribers and it's free.com. So I don't want nobody in here thinking, oh, he's trying to get money. He's trying to get money. It's free.com. In other words, it's free. No, I don't need a thousand to go live. I thought I needed a thousand to go live because TikTok says you need a thousand to go live. All I needed was 50 to go live. So I already got that. So I'm already able to go live on, on YouTube. The only reason I didn't go live is because every time I go live on YouTube, we only got like seven people. We only got like seven people. So, and I don't want to miss the opportunity of, of reaching more people. Even though I don't mind with seven people, hey, listen, let's get it in. But I do want to make sure that there is access available to as many people as possible that can hear the word. All right. And then once, once I'm able to grow, I'm able to get a better computer, then I can do what you call multi-streaming. All right. But right now I can't multi-stream because I have a Chromebook. I have an HP Chromebook and, and that computer is trash. It's not HD. So it can't uphold the amount of uh, 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 software that's necessary to multi-stream. Right. Multi-stream is when I can just use my laptop and I can multi-stream on all different platforms at one time from one device. I can't do that right now because I don't have the software that can do that. But God is going to provide eventually and we just have to be patient and eventually God is going to get us there. All right. So we just got to use what we have right now. We just have to use what we have right now. All right. <clears throat> All right. Update my start date for my new job. My start date for my new job is November 27th. All right. Remember the job I applied for at the homeless shelter? Well, they offered me the position. I just had to do a background check. I finished that. I had to do a drug screening. I just finished that on Monday. So now I'm just waiting for all of that stuff to clear. And then I will literally start working at the homeless shelter with the homeless, the mentally um, ill, um, those that are in dire need. Amen. So I will be what's called a resident advocate. Amen. And my birthday is November 24th. Amen. I will be turning 38 years old, y'all. Can you believe it? I will be turning 38 years old on November 24th, right around the corner. So praise God. And you know what's a blessing? Last year, at this time, I was homeless. Last year, at this time, I was homeless.
but God. All right, let's get back into the word. Let's get back into the word. All right, hold on, y'all. Y'all know, shout outs, shout outs. Lance, still didn't hear from you, Lance. How you doing, Lance? I'm gonna ask you again. Robert, how are you, Robert? Hello, Jackie, how are you? Rachel, how are you? Freddie, how are you? Spirit Sealed, I'm gonna ask you again. How are you? Spider Slicer, how are you? Gracefully, how are you? Teria, how are you? Renisha, God bless, how are you? Doug Freeman, how are you? Robert, Carol, how are you? Highly favored, how are you? Amen. Praise God. I'm doing great, Spider. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right. So we understand that Noah. Gave birth. I know I spelled that name wrong. But we know that's just that's Japheth. All right. That's that's it's supposed to say Japheth. I'm, I'm writing in cursive. All right. So it might not look it's spelled right. I'm writing in cursive. <laughs> All right. So Noah gave birth to Shem, Ham, and Japheth. All right. And understanding these genealogies is very important. All right. Noah got drunk. And Noah fell asleep in his tent, but naked. Amen. I see some people left. I see some people left. I wish I knew who they was. When Noah fell asleep. Hold on, what's going on in the chat? What's going on in the chat? Ant said, love is a strong statement. All right. What does that, I'm a call, what's, what's, what's that supposed to mean, Ant? Huh? Are you saying we are not supposed to use that word? I don't want no confusion to be in the chat. Are you saying we are not supposed to use the word love? Is that what you're saying? I'm asking you. You're responding to somebody else on, on, on my platform. So I'm asking you a question. Are you saying that we're supposed to use the word compassion in replace of love? Is that what you're saying? I'm asking a question. Because we let the word of God speak here. We let the word of God speak. Now, I want y'all to pay attention. I want y'all to pay attention. Because this brother is on a live that I'm conducting, telling me that something he said in the chat has nothing to do with me. No man hath seen God, 
at any time. If we love one another, God dwelleth in us. And his love is perfected in us. Hereby know we that we dwell in him. This is how we know that we dwell in him. This is how we know and he dwells in us. This is how we know. Because he hath given us his spirit. You see that? And we have seen and do testify that the father sent the son to be the savior of the world. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the son of God, God dwelleth in him and he in God. And we have known and believed that love. We have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love and he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God and God in him. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because as he is, so are we. In this world, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. If a man say, I love God. And hateth his brother. He is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He that loveth not his brother. Whom he hath seen. How can he love God. Whom he hath not seen. You see that? I don't understand, brother, Aunt, why you got so defensive when I was simply asking you for clarity, brother. I was simply asking you for clarity. Again, you are on my live, brother. I didn't invite you. I don't even know you. But I do know that you said this. You said love is a strong statement. Having compassion. And I just wanted clarity on the statement. I didn't know what it meant. And I didn't want to misinterpret you, brother. Because when you misinterpret somebody. Then you assume, and I don't never want to be somebody to assume. Amen. Anybody that puts a comment in the chat is talking to me. Because I'm responsible for the comments in the chat. I'm responsible. I'm an overseer. Of what's said in the chat. Because what's said in the chat. Is being digested. By the listeners. Do you understand that? What's said in the chat. Is digested. By the listeners. And I have to be a overseer. A good steward. Of what's being said. I don't understand why this is a back and forth. When all I did was ask you for clarity.
You see, I want my brothers and sisters to do this. This is why I have these conversations and the, why the spirit of God leads me to have these dialogues with certain people. I don't have these dialogues with everybody, but I have them with certain people for a reason. Because I need everybody to see just how hard it is for people to communicate. You get what I'm saying? See now the name calling. I need y'all to understand discernment. You have to be able to recognize those spirits. And I, I just thank God for discernment. I thank God for discernment. Because the Lord be leading me to the right people that I need to address. Come on now. <laughs> it never fails. It never fails. It never fails. Thank you for that mute. You are, you are more than uh, capable of doing that. If they get too disrespectful, yes, you can definitely mute them. Sister Tanya, um, I'm going to make you a moderator, Sister Tanya. I would love for you to be a moderator too. Amen. All right. So now. When <laughs> Sister Grace said me too. Absolutely, Sister Grace. I love you, Sister Grace. So Noah gave birth to Shem, Ham, and Joseph. Noah was naked in his tent. And the Bible talks about how Ham saw his nakedness. And when Ham saw his nakedness, Ham went to his brothers and told them. And the Bible says that his brothers walked into the tent backwards because they did not want to see Noah's nakedness. And they laid a, a, a garment over Noah. Amen. Amen. So as a result of Ham What does that mean spiritually? No, we can look at that from a literal sense. It was shameful to see your father naked. All right? It was shameful. It was disrespectful. Okay? And Shem and Joseph understood that. And they had respect and they honored their father by walking in backwards. Now, if the Lord gives you a revelation as to a spiritual application, praise God. But one thing about me is I'm never going to freestyle. The Lord has not given me a spiritual application to that particular um, situation. So as of right now, I can only teach it from a literal sense. Amen. Now, if the Lord one day gives me revelation for a spiritual application, I'll share it. But until then, to me, it's literal. All right. So because Ham saw Noah's nakedness, Noah cursed Ham. All right. Noah cursed Ham. And the curse that Noah gave unto Ham was that Ham's son, whose name was Canaan, uh-oh, about to start making sense. Ham had a son named Canaan, 
which is where we get the Canaanites. This is where we get the Canaanites who occupied the land of Canaan. All right. So God told him that his son Canaan would serve Shem. That was the curse. Your son Canaan will serve Shem. When, when we look at the genealogy, this is why genealogy is so important. Because now, when we go down the genealogy of Shem, we'll understand why the land of Canaan was chosen as the promised land for Israel. All right? Canaan was the land that God gave to Israel. But when we understand this curse and we understand genealogies, it answers the question as to why the land of Canaan was chosen. Why did God tell Abram out of all people? Why did God tell Abram that he was going to give him the land of Canaan? What does Abram have to do with this particular curse? Abram has to be somehow connected to Shem. Abram can't be connected to Joseph. Abram can't be connected to Ham. So we have to try to see if Abram is connected in any way to Shem. Because then and only then will this make sense. Right. So now when we look at the genealogy. Let's start with Shem. There. These are the gene, the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and begat Aphrax two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begat Aphrak 500 years and begat sons and daughters. And Aphrak lived 530 years and begat Salah. And Aphrak lived after he begat Salah 403 years and begat sons and daughters. And Salah lived 30 years and begat Eber. And Salah lived after he begat Eber 400 and three years and begat sons and daughters and Eber lived four and thirty years and begat Peleg and Eber lived after he begat Peleg four hundred and thirty years and begat sons and daughters and Peleg lived thirty years and begat Ru and Peleg lived after he begat Ru two hundred and nine years and begat sons and daughters and Ru lived two and thirty years and begat Sarug and Ru lived after he begat Sarug 207 years and begat sons and daughters. And Sarug lived 30 years and begat Ahor. And Sarug lived after he begat Ahor 200 years and begat sons and daughters. And Ahor lived 9 and 20 years and begat Terah. And Nahor lived after he begat Terah a hundred and nineteen years and begat sons and daughters. And Terah lived seventy years and begat Abram. Lord have mercy. Genealogies answers the questions every time. So we see how Shem directly connects to Abram, which fulfills that particular curse that was placed on Ham, saying that Canaan would serve Shem. Lord, have mercy. Amen. 
Let's keep the genealogies going. Let's keep the genealogies going because they're very important. It's going to lead us up to talking about the law. It's going to lead us up to talking about the law. Now, now that we have Abram, we have to understand something. That there was what? A promise made to Abram. We have to understand promise. All right. Promise. Promise. We're not talking about law right now. We're talking about promise. Promise made to Abram. Amen? Is everybody on the same page? <clears throat> Are we all on the same page? Amen. All right, so real quick, let's go to Genesis and let's look at a few things in Genesis concerning Abram. In the book of Genesis chapter 12, it's very important for us to understand something. The Bible says, now the Lord had said unto Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house. Unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. I don't know why my phone keep coming unplugged. And I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing and I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Then it goes on to talk about how Lot went with him. But the key is Abram departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. Now, one thing, one thing that I want us to understand One thing that I want us to understand is this. He told him to leave his country, kindred, and father's household. Why? There's something that we need to know about Abram. There's something we need to know about his country. There's something we need to know about his kindred. And there's something we need to know about his father's house. We need to know that's very important. It's very important in understanding the promise 
And in order for us to understand that, we got to go to Joshua 24. We got to go to Joshua 24. Because that will answer the question as to why God told Abram to leave his country, kindred, and father's household to go to the promised land or the land that he will show him, right? Very important. Because God called someone who was not in covenant. This is very important. He called someone who was not in covenant. Because this is a symbolic representation of what God was going to do future through Jesus. All right. Remember this. Not in covenant. And we're also going to read this in Galatians chapter three. All right. We're also going to read this in Galatians chapter three. So when we go to Joshua. Deuteronomy, Joshua, there we go. When we go to Deuteronomy, uh, Joshua 24. All right. Do, 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 do. Um, let's see. All right, here we go. The Bible says, and Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Sheshem and called for the elders of Israel and for their heads and for their judges and for their officers. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said unto all the people, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old times. Do y'all remember when we dwelt on the other side of the flood? Do you know how many Christians are still living like they're on the other side of the flood? Do you know how many believers that are still living like they're on the other side of the flood. Oh, that's a word. Which side of the flood are you on? Ooh, that's a word. That's a word. Which side of the flood are you on? Wow, wow, wow. Wow, wow, wow. So he says, thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Your fathers dwelt on the other side of the flood in old times. Even Terah, the father of. The father <laughs> of Abraham and the father of Nakar. And they served other gods. Y'all see that? Abram was not in covenant. 
He lived in a country with kindred in his father's house and they worshiped other gods. They worshiped other gods. Abram was the heathen. Abram's father's house was the heathen. His kindred was the heathen. The country he lived in, they were the heathen. They were the pagans. They worshiped other gods. And God was showing us through Abram how he would justify the heathen by faith because he told Abram to leave that. It wasn't that he was telling Abram to leave the country, kindred and father's house. He was saying, turn your back on worshiping these other gods and go to a land that I will show you where you will worship me and me alone. You will worship me and me alone. God wasn't finished with Abram. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 17, the Bible says, and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. <sighs> Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. And will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him. Glory to God. Saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. And thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh oh I hope y'all caught that 
I hope y'all caught that. God made a covenant with Abraham and his seed. That covenant was not made with seeds, meaning more than one person. The covenant was made with Abraham and his seed, singular. So now the question is, who is this seed that they were referring to? Because then we have to get into genealogies again. It's not Isaac. It's not Isaac. It's not us. Let's go to Galatians chapter three. Let's go to Galatians chapter three. Let's go to Galatians chapter three. Let's start in Galatians chapter three. Let's start from verse five. The Bible says, he therefore that ministereth to you the spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth he it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Paul is speaking to the Galatians church because he got word that the church that he established in Galatia the church that he preached to, teach to, and they received the Holy Spirit. They believed on the name of Jesus Christ and the sacrifice that was made on their behalf. He got word that these same individuals were going back to the law. That they were forsaking and going back to the law. They were bewitched. So he's asking them a question. Okay, you're going back to the law. Well, I need you to answer a question. Did you receive the spirit that dwells in you right now? Did you get it by works of the law or by hearing of faith? Then in verse six, he goes on and says, even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Know ye therefore that they which are of faith, the same are the children of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify, declare righteous, put in right standing the heathen through faith preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying in thee shall all nations be blessed. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, cursed is everyone that continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them but that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith and the law is not of faith, but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the spirit through faith. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, 
Yet if it be confirmed, no man disannulleth or addeth thereto. Now to Abraham and his seed. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not and to seeds as of many. So it wasn't plural, but as of one and to thy seed, which is Christ. And to thy seed, which is Christ. You see that? Does everybody see that? Amen. So now let's deal with genealogies because we have to make our way. We have to make our way through the scriptures. All right. What you can't even break covenant. See. The reason why I highlight comments like this is because I don't understand them because they're not scriptural. Um, I don't understand what you mean by you can't even break covenant. I don't know what that means. I don't I don't know what you're trying to say. Um, I don't know what you're trying to say, because the Bible is clear in Jeremiah chapter 11. The Bible is speaking of Israel and it says they are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers, which refused to hear my words. And they went after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel, northern kingdom and the house of Judah, southern kingdom have broken my covenant. Okay? So what you're saying is false. What you're saying... Hold on one second. Hold on one second, y'all. Amen. Praise God. That was um that was my neighbor. Amen. That was my neighbor. I have an elderly neighbor. She's um she always comes up to uh check on me and things of that nature. So she's a she's a very, very beautiful, beautiful soul. Beautiful soul. Amen. But she was she was looking for my wife. They're they're both Korean. Amen. So so now I want everybody to follow follow what we're saying. Grace, don't jump the gun, break. Grace, I need you to just follow the story. All of those questions will be answered. All right? Just follow. Just go with the flow. 
Just go with the flow. All right. And again, I don't know why this particular person felt the need to put this in the chat. But I want to I want to highlight it because I never want these false statements to go uncorrected. All right. And I'm going to tell you why. Because we're not see when you make statements like that, when I'm speaking about a certain context. We're speaking about the old covenant. So you can't make statements like that. If it's in reference to the new covenant, then I totally understand. But you have to be on one accord with what we're talking about. Now, if you're referring to this new covenant, absolutely. But we're not even talking about that. Amen. It's all right, brother or sister. It's all right. It's all right. But I want to make sure that we are all flowing with the same spirit. I want to make sure we are all flowing on one accord. Amen. So everybody in the chat, he was referring. Let me see. I don't want to keep calling he or she. Um, are you are you a, a, a man or a woman? He. All right. Yeah. So our brother was, in fact, correct. Our brother was referring to the new covenant and how we, we can't break that covenant because that covenant is a unilateral covenant. Amen. It's not a bilateral covenant like the old covenant. It's a unilateral covenant. So in that context, he was absolutely right. All right. But in the context of the old covenant, it does not apply because it's clear that the northern and the southern kingdoms broke the covenant. All right. So praise God for that clarity. Praise God for that clarity. Amen. All right. So let's continue on with our genealogies. So we understand that Abraham gave birth to Isaac. Okay. Who did Isaac? Oh, man. Who did Isaac give birth to? <laughs> Sister Grace, you know. Jacob. That's right. What was Jacob's name changed to? Thank you for the follow, Sister Amanda. That's right. Israel. All right. Now, Jacob had 12 sons. Okay. And these 12 sons made up what we refer to as the 12 tribes of Israel. Okay? Now, who are the 12 sons of Jacob? Asher. Let's go in alphabetical order. It kind of helps us. Dan. Gad, Judah, Ooh. 
I gotta learn how to write in a straight line. Levi. Right? Oh no. Joseph. Levi. One, two, three, four, five, six. I see y'all in the chat. I done messed up the alphabetical order, huh, y'all? It's a car. Right? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Zebulon, that's right. Right? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, oh, Nephitali. Right? Benjamin. Right? <clears throat> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right? <clears throat> Who we missing? Reuben. Right? Who we missing? Last but not least, Simeon. All right? So, with this understanding, we see that Jacob had 12 sons. We're not going to get into Ephraim yet, all right? Because Ephraim was not Jacob's son. Ephraim was Joseph's son. All right? And we're going to get into that when we break down the tribes. Right now, we're only talking about his sons. All right? Amen? We're only dealing with his sons. And I'm just trying to get y'all to see the genealogies. So that we can get familiar with the names. We can get familiar with the order. We started all the way from Eve. We started all the way from Eve. And we are still traveling through that lineage of the of what God said to that serpent. The seed of Eve would bruise his head. So we followed Eve's lineage. We made our way all the way to Abram, Isaac, Jacob, and now we're looking at the 12 sons, right? Does anybody need to screenshot this or are y'all cool? Can I erase this? Can I erase this, y'all? Amen. So now, now, I want to go in another direction and we're going to circle. We're going to circle right back around to talking about the tribes. All right. But I need to give it to y'all from another perspective. <clears throat> now, the tribes, the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, Lord, have mercy. Huh, people want to text me back and forth. The 12 tribes of Israel, let's just say they became a kingdom. 
Okay? They weren't a kingdom at first. Well, they were a kingdom, but God appointed unto them judges. All right? There were judges that were appointed to Israel. And Israel, <laughs> see, the thing is, they wanted to be like other nations, right? Because they had judges. We know they had judges like uh, Ehud, right? They had uh, Samson, right? We remember all of that. Remember Shamgar, right? He was, he defeated a whole lot of uh, 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 Philistines, right? There was a whole lot of different judges, Elon, just to name a few. Right. And these were all appointed at particular times for particular reasons. Right. But there came a time when Israel, they wanted a king, even though they had one in God. Even though they already had a king in God. They wanted one. They wanted one. Isn't that something? Even though we have everything we need in God, we always want something else. We always feel like we need something else. Right? So now let's deal with the tribes. Now let's deal with the tribes. Because we have to understand that this kingdom now was made up of 12 tribes. All right. And the tribes all was given a particular portion of land. All right. These tribes had to go to war. All right. And the same, not all of the same names of his sons are translated into the tribes. All right. And once I write them out, we'll see who was excluded. Okay. So we see, we know that we had the tribe of Asher. Right. We know we had the tribe of Dan. Same names, almost the same names that we wrote before. Almost the same names. But now we got to understand this. Remember when I told you about Joseph? Joseph, although he was the son of Jacob, although he was the son of Israel, Joseph was not a tribe. Okay? Joseph was not a tribe. Joseph had two sons. Ephraim and Manasseh. And these became tribes. All right. These became tribes. So these were the sons of Joseph. So we had Ephraim. Right. We had Gad. We understand all of this. We already wrote these names down, y'all. So we're not, we're not, let's add Manasseh. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, who was it? Who was it, y'all? Nephitali. Uh, Reuben. Simeon. Uh, who was it? Zebulon. What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We had Judah. And we had uh, Benjamin. All right. And we have Benjamin. Right? So these were the 12 tribes. The 12 tribes. And these tribes made up the kingdom of Israel. Now notice 
We already see Joseph's not on here, but his sons are. But we also see how Levi isn't on there, right? Why was a Levi not a part of these particular sets of tribes? Because Levi was set apart, okay? Levi was set apart from his brothers, all right? Levi was actually instructed to live directly surrounding the tabernacle, right? The tent of meeting. They were set apart because they became the priestly tribe. They became the tribe of priests. Okay, and their job was to provide maintenance, amen, and take care of God's dwelling place. All right, let me see if I can get a picture. Um, let me see if I can get a quick picture. That's right, Brother Kent. They were the priesthood. All right. They were the priesthood. Amen. And the job of the priest. Right. And matter of fact, that's how. This is where Aaron. Right. Moses. They came from the tribe. Of Levi. You see that? They came from the tribe of Levi, the priestly tribe. Okay? And when we see the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, the priest had certain duties, the priest had certain obligations. Okay? The priest Hallelujah Oh my lord Hold on y'all I'm, I'm gonna use my Apple watch to respond Hold on y'all Give me a second You don't have to use mine. Just use your personal.
Lord, have mercy. Oh man, a lot of people left. See? <laughs> oh my. See? We need to go in prayer. That our brothers and sisters get some patience. Our brothers and sisters need some patience. All right, let me see who's up there. I got to call some people out. Rachel, I still haven't heard from you. How are you? Hello, Jackie. I haven't heard anything from you. How are you? Kathy Free, you're in here. Haven't heard anything from you. How are you? Little bit stormy. You haven't said anything. Hi. Jack 1392. Hi. Power through prayer. Still haven't heard anything from you. Hi. John. Hi. Robert. Hi. Teddy. Hi. Me. Hi. Come on, y'all. I should not have to call y'all out like this. And this is in love. Y'all come in here. I'm teaching. Y'all have to start speaking. Y'all have to start speaking. Amen. Little bit. If you commented above, praise God. Thank you for that. Amen. If you did speak and I missed it, thank you. But I know a lot of them I didn't miss. <laughs> We're not going to do that. I know a lot of them I didn't miss. <laughs> Everybody ain't going to use that because I'm going to scroll up and see. <laughs> it's all love, y'all. I'm not, I'm not attacking. I'm not coming at y'all. But I do want us to get into the process of speaking when we come up in here. Don't just come up in here and just listen. Make yourself known. All right. I don't go into prayer. I don't fast and, and put together these studies to just speak to people that don't have enough respect enough to speak. If I'm making sacrifices and things of that nature to make sure that I teach, then I would expect brothers and sisters to show enough respect to at least say hi. I'm not asking for you to give long paragraphs, sentences, just hi. JT, it ain't hard to text hi. You just text one, two, hold on. Come on now, JT. Uh-uh. You just text 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. You just text 22 words. I'm only asking for two. <laughs> you just text 22 words. Or I said words. 22 letters. I don't care if you at work. Two letters. <laughs> All right, let me stop messing with y'all. Y'all gonna talk. Y'all gonna start taking this serious. People already left. People already left. Let me stop messing with y'all. I gotta. I gotta let y'all get used to me first before I start doing that. Cause you know, people that are new, they might take that the wrong way. <laughs> 
<laughs> let me, I got to let y'all get used to my humor. I got to let y'all get used to my character first before I start, before I start playing around with y'all. Because there are some people that will take that offensive and they'll leave out mad for no reason. Amen. All right, let me erase. Let me erase this, y'all. It's all love in here, y'all. It's all love. It's all love. Do not mind me, y'all. Do not mind silly old me. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, y'all, give me a second. Let me go grab me a water. Hey, Danny P. Danny P. Right? Amen. So. All right. So Israel, even though they had the king and God, they wanted a king for themselves. They wanted a king for themselves. So what did God do? God appointed Saul, right? God appointed Saul. And because Saul ended up becoming wicked or whatever, God ended up appointing David, right? No, not Paul. That's, that's New Testament. We're talking about Saul, Old Testament, King Saul, Old Testament. And we understand that David had a son named Solomon. All right? But Solomon allowed himself to be drawn away by these foreign wives and they drew his heart towards them. And as a result of that, God told, God told Solomon that he was going to tear the kingdom from him and he was going to give it to his servant who was Rehoboam. All right. Now Solomon ended up continuing his reign and Solomon gave birth to a son named Rehoboam. All right. Now, the thing is, Israel ended up going to Rehoboam, Israel and Jeroboam. And they said, hey, listen, you know, can you release these burdens? that your father placed on us, right? So what Rehoboam did was he went to the elders first and he asked them for their advice. And they told him, listen, release the burden and they're going to serve you, you know, release it. He disregarded what the elders had to say and he went to the youngins, right? And the youngins told him, increase it. And he listened. And as a result of that, Israel revolted against Rehoboam. All right. And this is what brought about the division of the kingdom of Israel. All right. This is what brought about the division. And Israel was broke up into what we know as the Northern Kingdom, AKA Kingdom of Israel, and the Southern Kingdom, Kingdom of Judah. All right. Amen. 
Now, we already went, um, we already went through, we already went through, um, the names of these particular king, uh, tribes that were in each kingdom. Um, the Northern kingdom was Asher, Dan, Ephraim, Gad, Issachar, Manasseh, Nephitali, Reuben, Simeon, and Zebulon. That was the Northern kingdom. The Southern kingdom was Judah and Benjamin. Hey, Gigi. All right. Jeroboam was the king of the northern. Rehoboam was the king of the southern. Now, we know all throughout the Old Testament, these kings changed because one king would die. Another king took his place. One king would die. Another king would take his place. We understand that. But at this time, we also know that Israel was in what? They were in a covenant with God. All right? And that covenant is what we will refer to as a marriage contract. OK, when we go to Exodus 24, when we go to Exodus 24, we see here and Moses alone shall. Well, let's go to verse three. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the judgments. And all the people answered with one voice and said, all the words which the Lord hath said, we will do. So Israel agreed to the marriage contract. All right. And remember, this covenant was what we call a bilateral covenant. Why? Because there was a part that needed to be played by Israel as well. Okay? If you do this, you will get this. If you don't do this, you will get this. All right? And they agreed. They agreed. So when we see in Jeremiah chapter 11, there is no getting around the Bible, when it says Jeremiah chapter 11, talks about Israel and it talks about both northern and southern. This is why I like to highlight Jeremiah 11, because it proves that both kingdoms broke that marriage contract. It says they are turned back to the iniquities of their forefathers which refused to hear my words. And they went after other gods to serve them. The house of Israel, northern kingdom, and the house of Judah, southern kingdom, have broken my covenant, which I made with their father. They broke the covenant. We see that? They broke the covenant. So what we're going to do now is we are going to dissect and look at this covenant. We are going to dissect and we're going to look at this covenant. And we are going to clearly show how Jesus Christ fulfilled it, this particular law. Because the covenant that they were in was the law. The law was the marriage contract that Israel could not keep. The law was the marriage contract that Israel could not keep. And we are going to show clearly how it was fulfilled. 
All right. Now, again, we have to be able to understand God's moral. We're going to just call it God's moral law. Right. Always was. Before there was a, a law that said thou shall not kill. We're not going to sit here and act like there was not a consciousness that killing was wrong. Okay? The morals of God. All right? But we have to look at Israel and the condition of Israel at this time. Israel was in a, under a certain condition because they were coming out of Egypt after 430 years. They had a heart like Egypt. had a heart like Egypt. The Bible in the book of Acts 7, it says they turned to Egypt in their heart. They turned to Egypt in their heart. And this was the people that God was dealing with in the wilderness. He was dealing with Israelite bodies with Egyptian hearts. And they didn't know coveting was coveting. They didn't know. Which is why Paul writes, I would have not known thou shalt not covet unless there was a law that said thou shalt not covet. Right? So what God did was God gave 10 commandments. Because of their transgression. That's why the Bible says the law was added for transgression. But what we need to understand is these tablets of stone, God's moral, who he is. He put his moral standard that transcends Moses. He put his moral standard that transcends Abraham. He put his moral standard that transcends Adam and he put that moral standard on tablets of stone. On tablets of stone. Amen. We understand them. Thou shalt not have any other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven images. Thou shalt not make or take thy name in vain. Remember the Sabbath. Honor thy mother and father. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet. We know this is what God gave to Israel. The other nations did not have this. This covenant was directly, specifically between God and Israel. And God took his moral standard and wrote it on tablets of stone. But it was powerless. Not saying that it wasn't holy. Not saying that it wasn't good. Not saying that it wasn't spiritual. We're not saying any of that. What we're saying is that it was powerless.
Romans chapter eight. For what the law could not do. For it was powerless. Because of the flesh. You see that? Right? So God gave these 10 commandments. God gave these 10 commandments. But he didn't stop there. Because this is found in Exodus 20. Right? And we also need to understand that there was something else that was provided other than the Ten Commandments. And that other thing is the book of the law. Now, overall, they are considered the law. But we have to be able to differentiate them as well. Overall, they are considered the law. But we have to understand they are different at the same time. Okay? Because the Ten Commandments were actually placed and located inside the ark. Whereas the book of the law in the side of the ark. Amen. Ten Commandments was placed inside of the ark. Book of the law was placed in the side of the ark. All right. Understand that. Now, in understanding the book of the law, in understanding the book of the law, we have to understand that the book of the law was comprised of what we like to call a civil law. All right. This was within the book of the law. There was a civil component. There was a civil aspect of this book of the law. And this civil aspect in Exodus 21 See, the problem that I have with saying moral even though I know that's textbook, that's textbook, but you don't have to say moral because it, God is moral. There's no separate section like, OK, this is civil and this part is moral. Right. And this part, God is moral. God is moral. God is moral, right? So when we're looking at the civil aspect of this particular book of the law, it'll bring us to Exodus 21 and other places as well. But we, we see that these were like the judgments. Okay. And it was, in, it was actually man's Retribution, man's reimbursement. If man killed another man, there was a judgment for that. If you had an ox that killed my ox or if you killed my ox, there was a judgment for that. If you laid with my wife, there was a judgment for that. 
right? If you mistreated your maid servant or your man servant, there was a judgment for that, right? An eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth, right? So there was a civil component that if something was to happen as far as man to man, there was a judgment to put man in right standing with man to satisfy whatever wrong was done, right? There was a judgment to satisfy whatever wrong was done. So it satisfied man to man, but just because this civil component satisfied man to man, that doesn't mean the civil component satisfied man to God, which made it very clear that there had to be another component because the civil law only satisfied man to man. It did not satisfy man to God, which is why there was a ceremonial component to this book of the law because the ceremonial component is what satisfied man to God. Which is why there were sacrifices that had to be made. Offerings had to be made. Feasts had to be adhered to. Right? Because through these, man continued to stay within right standing with God. Through these sacrifices, through these offerings, through the keeping of these feasts and ceremonies, right? These holy days, right? These Sabbaths, right? Through these, man was able to continue in right standing with man. Why? Because man was always in a state of sin. Israel was always in a state of sin, which is why they had to work every day. They were always in a state of sin, so they had to make sure that they worked every day, which was definitely why they needed a rest. <laughs> because all they did was work. They needed a rest. All they did was work. Because they had to continue to work to remain in right standing with God. Remember, that priest, every day, that priest had to go into this tent. Behind the first veil, he had to make sure these lampstands were constantly lit. He had to make sure the showbread was constantly fresh every day. This was a daily function, right? But every year he went behind the second veil. Every day he went behind the first veil. Shout out to Danny P. I don't know if he left or not, but Danny P gave me this revelation. Danny P gave me this revelation. Shout out to my brother. The behind the first veil was considered earth, all right? This is what it was called. It was called earth. Behind the second veil, it was considered heaven, okay? So you had heaven and earth, which ultimately was symbolic to the system of the law. It was the system that was established, that old covenant system, that was heaven and earth, which is why Jesus was able to say, until heaven and earth passes away. Meaning, until the doing away of this system, until this system was done away with, the law was still in place. But I'm here to let you know that heaven and earth did pass. 
because it was not referring to a physical or a literal heaven and earth. It was referring to the system of this covenant, the system. Amen. So now when we look at these civil and ceremonial aspects, right? When we look at the civil and ceremonial aspects, now we have to ask ourselves, well, how did Jesus satisfy this? Well, when we look at the civil component, we see that the civil aspect was simply to satisfy man to man. I don't need a civil law to satisfy anything because Jesus satisfied it all. I don't need a civil law to satisfy If anybody wants to screenshot that, you are more than welcome. Right? Because under the civil law, guess what? Guess what? The reason why it doesn't apply to the believer is because we're not going to kill our brother. So there's no need for a judgment for that. We're not going to sleep with our, uh, 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 let's go to, let's go, let's go there. Let's go there real quick. Let's go there real quick. Cause I want y'all to see it. I'm not going to read all of them, but I want to bring y'all to Leviticus, not not Leviticus. I want to bring y'all to Exodus, right? And then I'm going to show y'all something else because the, this particular law was not made for a righteous man. It was made for the ungodly because that's what the ungodly did. The reason why all of these judgments were put in place is because this is how Israel was acting. Look at this. If any man shall steal an ox, the righteous ain't going to steal no ox. So this doesn't apply to us. If the thief, the righteous man ain't got nothing to do with no thief. Do y'all get what I'm saying? This was specifically written for the ungodly. How do we know that? Because when we go to 1 Timothy, Look at what it says. First Timothy chapter one, verse nine, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. But for the lawless, Israel was a lawless people. So God had to give them a law. All right. It was made for the disobedient. Israel was disobedient. So they needed a law. It was made for the ungodly. Israel was ungodly. They came out of Egypt where they was doing all types of stuff. The law was made for the ungodly. That's why they were acting the way they acted. That's why they needed these particular civil aspects. They needed this structure. They needed boundaries, limits on their conduct. All right. So the law was made for what? The lawless, the disobedient, the ungodly. Look at this. It was made for sinners and we are not sinners in Christ. This is who the law was made for. This is why I say we have to understand Israel's condition. We have to understand Israel's condition at the time. So that we'll then understand why there was a need for this law for them. There was a need of this law for them because of the condition that they were in at that time. Okay, 
coming out of Egypt, they were lawless. They were disobedient. They were ungodly. They were sinners. They were unholy. They were profane. They were murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers. They were manslayers. They were whoremongers. This is who Israel was. So God had to give them a law. God had to give them a law. Now, if that's who you are, then yes, you need a law. That's why there's laws in America. Because you have disobedient people in America. And the law provides structure and protection. But guess what? God says, I'm going to do something. Because I took my moral standard and wrote it on tablets. I took my moral standard and I wrote it on tablets, but it was powerless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a new covenant. And this time, I'm not going to put my moral standard on tablets. I'm going to put my moral standard on their heart. You see, God's standard doesn't change. It's just up here, it was you trying to do it. Whereas here, it's God doing it through you. The standard, let's, let me erase this real quick. I'm going to come back to the civil law in a minute. I'm going to come back to the civil law in a minute. But one thing we need to understand. The Ten Commandments. All right. We're not going to sit here and say. Now that we're in the new covenant. All of a sudden. All of us. Oh man. Excuse me. All of a sudden. We can. Uh, uh, we can have other gods. We're not saying that. All of a sudden, now you can worship idols because we're not saying that because we serve the same God. His morals don't change. But there is a difference between that old and the new. The old, which was written on tablets, was you attempting to do it. God is saying you can't. So no longer am I going to write my moral standard on tablets of stone because you can't do it because of your nature. The law wasn't the problem. The people were. It wasn't the law that was the problem. The law was good. The law was holy. The law was spiritual. The law was not the problem. The law was God's morals on stone. That was not the problem. The people were the problem. So God needed to change the nature of man. Because before the law the book of the law, Ten Commandments, before they were given, sin was in the world. And this was the issue. This needed to be addressed. The nature of man needed to be addressed. So God said, I'm going to put my moral standard, a.k.a. my spirit, in their hearts because God's spirit changes the nature of man. Which is why the Bible says, therefore, he who is in Christ is a new creation. Right? Right? A new creation. 
Therefore, we have a new nature. So now that God's spirit is in us, that doesn't mean that his standard change. That just means now God is able to live out his moral standard through us. We're not going to say, oh, now you could kill. No, we can go all throughout the matter of fact. Let's go to Romans 13. Let's go to Romans 13. Let's go to Romans 13. Because people always try to say, oh, well, you're trying to say that now you could kill. Now you could still No, nobody's saying that because that's God's standard. But that standard is not something that we have to attempt to try to do. That standard is fulfilled and satisfied through us by God's spirit. I don't murder because there's some tablets that say don't murder. I don't murder because the spirit leads me not to murder. I don't steal because there's something written on some tablets that say don't steal. I don't steal because the spirit of God that lives in me leads me not to steal. I don't covet because some tablets say don't covet. I don't covet because the spirit of God that lives in me leads me not to covet. It's the spirit of God not coveting through me. I don't commit adultery because there's some tablets that have do not commit adultery. No, I don't commit adultery because the spirit of God that lives in me works through me and the spirit of God empowers me and gives me the ability to sow self-control. The ability of the, the spirit of God gives me a, a, a ability to restrain myself. The spirit of God gives me the ability to exercise self-control. But again, we can see these quote unquote Ten Commandments all throughout the New Testament. Why? Because God's standard doesn't change. God's standard doesn't change. It's just how he administers that standard that changes. Let me say that again. God's standard doesn't change. How he administers the standard is what changed. He administered the standard before on tablets of stone, whereas now his standard is administered through his spirit. The standard doesn't change just how he administers it. All except the Sabbath. And matter of fact, let me break down the Sabbath to y'all real quick. Thank you for that, Danny P. Hey, Danny P, you in agreement with me, brother? You know, I respect your teaching, brother. You are, you are my elder. Danny P, you my elder, brother. Let me know if I'm on point, my brother. Let me know if I'm on point. Amen. Now, let's deal with this Sabbath. To show us why we don't have to keep the Sabbath day. Okay? Watch this. Watch this. In Exodus 16, right? I want us to pay attention. Israel is complaining. Like they always did. Israel complaining. Oh, you brought us out here to kill us. You brought us out here to die. This, that, and the third. In Egypt, we sat by the flesh pots. And we did eat bread to the full. And you brought us out here to kill us with hunger. This is what Israel was doing. They always was crying, murmuring, and complaining, right? So in verse 4, then said the Lord unto Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for you, and the people shall go out and gather a certain rate. Can somebody put that in the chat for me? A certain rate. Oh, that's very important. Put that in the chat for me. A certain rate. 
right? In other words, God was going to rain down bread and it was going to be bread all over the place, y'all. And Israel was supposed to only gather a certain rate, right? And there was a reason why, because God was actually trying to show Israel dependency on him. God was trying to show Israel how to trust him for their provision. This is why God said, gather a certain rate. He was testing them to see if they would truly trust and depend on him for provision. All right. With all of this abundance of bread, I need you to only take a certain amount and leave the rest because I need you to have faith and trust that on day two, I'm going to provide. But when people gathered the bread more than they needed, that was meaning that they don't trust God and they were taking it into their own hands and saying, listen, I don't know if God going to provide for me for day two. So I'm going to collect a little bit more than what he said, just in case he don't provide. I'm going to take it into my own hands. So I know I got some food for tomorrow. You see that? Y'all see that? Amen. Amen. Right? Deuteronomy 5.15. Let me read that. Deuteronomy 5.15. And remember that thou was a servant in the land of Egypt and that the Lord thy God brought thee out thence through a mighty hand and by a stretched out arm. Therefore, the Lord thy God command thee to keep the Sabbath day. That's right. Now, they were supposed to gather a certain rate every day. So let's keep reading. That I may prove them. That's right. It was only given to Israel, right? Everybody got to remember this. This particular covenant was only to Israel. All right. This Sabbath was only to Israel. No other nation had this particular command. It's only Israel. But look at this. Watch this. It was that I may prove them whether they will walk in my law or no. And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day, somebody put that in the chat, sixth day. That's very important in understanding Israel's Sabbath. Because they gathered a certain rate on day one. They gathered a certain rate on day two. They gathered a certain rate on day three. They gathered a certain rate on day four and they gathered a certain rate on day five. But something changed on day six. What did God say? And it shall come to pass that on the sixth day, they shall prepare that which they bring in and it shall be twice as much as they gather daily. Hold on. So you're telling me on the sixth day, they had to work twice as hard? You're telling me on the sixth day, they had to, they, they had to work twice as hard. In other words, their rest was dependent on their work. Because remember, on the seventh day, they couldn't work. So their rest was dependent on their work. Israel. And the reason why we don't attach ourselves to this system of Sabbath is because our rest 
is not dependent on our work. Our rest is dependent on what Jesus did. And Jesus is our rest. Jesus said, come to me, those who are heavy burdened, those who are uh, 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 heavy laden, and I will give thee rest. There's not a day that can give you rest. I will give you rest. All right. Somebody said Jesus kept the Sabbath. The Bible says that Jesus was born of a woman under the law. So yes, Jesus kept the law. And yes, Jesus he kept the law because he was under the law and he was under the law because he had to fulfill the law. If he didn't keep the Sabbath, then that means he broke the law. And if Jesus broke the law, then how could he fulfill it? We have to stop trying to use Jesus adhering to the law as if that's a, 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 a pass are a evidence that we have to keep the law. No, Jesus was born under the law. Therefore, he had to keep the law in order to fulfill the law. Jesus said, it is finished. All right? When you look at God, God rested after he completed his work. Christ rested after he completed his his work. And now we rest in the finished work of Christ. All right. We rest in the finished work of Christ. Now, let me show y'all something. When we go to the book of Colossians, right? Let me read something to y'all in the book of Colossians. Because I also want you to understand what Paul was saying. Because we need to understand. Do, 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 do. Uh, Sabbath, just as creation did in God after God completed his work. Um, What is that scripture, y'all? Colossians 2.16. All right, look at what the Bible says. Paul said, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. Now look at how he identifies this. He's referring to these Sabbath days as a shadow of the things to come. You see that? Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink, or in respect of holy days, or of the new moon, or of the Sabbath days, which are a shadow of the things to come. But the body is of Christ. You see that? Amen.
Now, I'm going to say this. It's about understanding. And I'll say it. I said it yesterday. I'll say it again. None of that stuff justifies you. Paul was very clear. Paul was very clear. And I'm going to read it one more time in Galatians chapter 3. Paul said, Galatians 3 verse 11. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. I'm going to read it one more time. But that no man is justified. Justified means to be declared righteous. No man is declared righteous. No man is acquitted. No man is considered not guilty by works of the law. Amen. Now watch this. This is, I mean, let me turn this around. I want y'all to read this. Look at this, y'all. Look at this. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith. So you're telling me that you want me to be under something that's not of faith. And the Bible is saying that I need to live by faith. Somebody got to make that make sense. God is telling me I need to live by faith. And he's telling me that the law is not of faith. So why do you want me to be under something that's not of faith if God requires me to live by faith? Can somebody make that make sense? Can somebody make that make sense? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> And again, and again, I need us to understand, understand. First Peter chapter one, verse nine, knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. It's not made for a righteous man. Well, who are the righteous? Who are the righteous? When we go to Romans chapter 5, verse 1, we can easily establish who the righteous are. We can easily establish who the righteous are. In Romans chapter 5, verse 1, it says, therefore, being justified, justified means to be declared righteous. So therefore, being declared righteous, us, by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we are the righteous ones in Christ Jesus. Now, understand how we obtained this righteousness was not based on anything that we did. It was actually called imputed righteousness. All right. Imputed righteousness. Now, when I say imputed righteousness, what I mean is Jesus, us, right? There was an exchange made, okay? Jesus imputed his righteousness unto us in exchange for our sin. So the righteousness that we 
have, the righteousness that we possess is not based on anything that we did. It's based on what Jesus Christ did. Amen. It's based on what Jesus Christ did. But we are the righteous. We are the righteous. And according to the scriptures, the law is not made for the righteous. Let's go a step further to really elaborate on why. Because you got to understand that us as believers, right? We operate according to what? The spirit. Okay? We operate according to the spirit. In the book of Corinthians, it says, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which lives in you, right? So we understand that the Holy Spirit is in us. So knowing that the Holy Spirit is in us, we have to also understand that this spirit is going to bear fruit in the life of the believer, all right? This spirit is going to bear fruit in the life of the believer. In other words, the, the believer is going to live out the fruit of the spirit. All right. It's not you. It's not you. You can't take credit for it. Right. You can't take credit for it. In other words, you can't boast. The only way that man can boast is according to the law that requires works, right? If you're the one doing it, you can boast because you're the one that's doing it, right? But the Bible says that boasting is excluded. The Bible says boasting is excluded. And in Romans chapter uh, what is it? Romans three. I think it's Romans three. Romans three says, and I'm gonna start from verse 27. It says, where is boasting then? It is excluded. Then it says, by what law? Hold on. So, so you're telling me there's an option. You're telling me there's an option by what law? That means there's more than one. If you're telling me by what law, then that means there must be more than one. There is a law unto works. There is a law that requires works. But then there is a law that requires faith. You see that? We operate under a law that requires faith. Faith. And under this law, there is no boasting because we are not the ones doing it. The spirit is the one working through us. How do we know that? How do we know that? Because the Bible says in Philippians chapter two, in Philippians chapter two, verse 13, it says, for it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. It's not us doing the work. It's God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. And let's real quick, before I go back to that, I want to also go to this Corinthian scripture. I want to also go to this Corinthian scripture real quick. Real quick, y'all. All right. In, in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, right? In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul begins to speak to the church in Corinth. And Paul says, ye are our epistles, a.k.a. letters, written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as ye are manifestly declared to be the epistles, the letters of Christ. Hallelujah. Ministered by us. Here we go. Written not with 
ink, but with the spirit of the living God. We are letters written with the spirit of God. Amen. Not in tablets of stone, but in fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of ourselves. Under the law, you could try to you can try to feel like you're sufficient of yourself. We are not sufficient of ourselves. Trying to keep the law is you basically saying I'm sufficient of myself. You trying to keep the letter, trying to keep the law is you saying I am sufficient of myself. Paul is saying not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but he's acknowledging that our sufficiency is of God who also hath made us able ministers of the what? The New Testament, not of the letter. The letter is the old. We are not ministers of the old. The, we are ministers of the new. We are not ministers of the letter. We don't lift up the letter. We are ministers of the spirit. We exalt the spirit. All right. We are not disciples of Moses. Do y'all remember when Jesus healed that blind man and they were questioning him and they started questioning uh, uh, his parents? What did those what did those law keepers say to that blind man? They literally let him know. They said, you are Jesus's disciple. We are Moses's disciples. That's what they said. They literally said, we are Moses's disciples. You are his disciples. And as long as you continue to adhere and put yourself under this old law, what you're indirectly saying is that you are a disciple of Moses. And if you're a disciple of Moses, then I'm sorry to tell you, you are a servant. You are a servant and not a son. You are not a son. The Bible says as long as the son remains, a, as long as the son remains a child, he differs nothing from a servant and is not an heir. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. The truth has to be spoken. The truth has to be spoken. And there is no way that you can get around the scriptures. There's no way that you can get around the scriptures. Nobody's saying that God's standard changed. God still has the same standard. Holiness. You think he wants us to kill? No. You think he wants us to steal? No. You think he wants us to commit adultery? No. But the difference is, it's not us doing it. It's his spirit doing it through us. It's not according to the letter. It's by the spirit. Conduct the same. Conduct the same. But the administration of it is different. 
Minus the Sabbath, of course. <laughs> it's really just that simple. We're not preaching lawlessness. We're preaching the Spirit. We're not teaching lawlessness. We're teaching the Spirit. Because people need to know who Jesus is, not Moses. People need to know that there is a Savior that died for them. People need to know that there is a Savior that died for them and that now there is access to relationship with God. They need to know that you are now at peace with God through Jesus Christ. You don't need to try to clean yourself up to come to God because there's too many people out here that try to use that excuse. Oh, you know, I, I'm a, I'm, let me get myself together first and, you know, then I'm going to, you'll never be able to do it. You'll never be able to do it. You come to God and let his spirit get you together. Oh, let me, let me clean up some stuff in my life first. Come to God and let him do the cleaning. Come to God and let him do the cleaning by his spirit. And he will bring to completion the work he started. He will bring to completion the work he started. His word will not go out void, but it will accomplish everything that it was sent out to do. You have to have faith and trust that. You have to trust it. Which is why we walk by faith. And not by sight. I pray that you all enjoyed this study. I know I did. I know I did. I pray that you all enjoyed this study. And that we all got something from it, that it was fruitful, that it was edifying. Amen. That we all have a better understanding. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you all that stayed the entire study. We had a lot of people that just came in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. But to God be the glory. Amen. Um, hopefully I could download this and upload it to my YouTube. Um, but I don't know why TikTok's not letting me download my lives. They... And, and they've been shadow banning me. I've been, I've been being shadow banned for like the last month. They're not, they're not allowing my videos to be shown on the For You page. They're limiting the algorithm. It's crazy. Um, no, I don't. It's really hard for me to set a schedule, y'all. Because I actually kind of let the Lord lead me. Because there's times when I say I'm not coming on and then the Lord will say, you need to go on there and teach. And then there's times when I say I'm going to come on and then the Lord restrains me and keeps me from coming on. So it's just really hard. It's really hard because I'm just led by the spirit. Um, but what I, will start, what I will start to do is I'll start to send out more and more invites so that y'all can get notified. All right. I'll start to send out more and more invites so that as soon as I go live, y'all will get that notification that I'm live. Amen. So y'all have a blessed day. Let's pray out. 
Gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you for this study. We thank you, Father God, for this opportunity, Father God, to exalt the name of Jesus, to lift up the name of Jesus so that your people, Father God, may know that there is a God that loves them so much that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So we thank you, Father God, for the lamb. We thank you for the blood that was shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins. We thank you for forgiveness. We thank you, Father God, for sending your Holy Spirit to reside and live in us, to clean us up, to shape us, to mold us, to guide us, to lead us, to direct us. We thank you for that Holy Spirit that sanctifies us from the inside out. We thank you for the position that you've given us in holiness. We thank you, Father God, for making us heirs with Christ. We thank you for raising us up together and seating us in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. We thank you for blessing us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. We thank you for your divine power that has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness. We thank you for giving us the strength that we rest in, the might that we rest in, the peace that we have. We thank you, Father God, for the ministry of reconciliation, that we may go out into this lost world and be salt and be light, that people may see our good works and give you glory and lift up your holy name. Continue to give us the ability, Lord, to walk as an example, to be true ambassadors of Christ, that we may show this world exactly what love looks like, because there are times when people may not ever read a physical Bible, but they will read us. So we thank you for allowing us to be the image bearers. And we give you all praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Have a blessed day, y'all.